Welcome back everyone to another Sabaton reaction video. Uh, today's going to actually be a two reaction video day. You're going to get to see the next episode in the series on the 30 Years War. I'll be recording that immediately after I record this. They'll probably come out a couple hours apart on the channel. Uh, continuing to heal from LASIK surgery. It's going really, really well. Uh, I'm also excited to be taking my first trip uh, for Rachel's Challenge in uh, about a year and a half. I'm flying to Wichita, Kansas tomorrow. Uh, there shouldn't be any breaks in videos, though. In fact, getting into Kansas is going to give me a little extra time to get my editing done on the next Vicksburg uh, episode, as well as uh, the, the final part of our series on reconstruction. So be watching for all of that. Uh, I'm also going to be back on a regular schedule making videos uh, for the gaming channel now that my kids are in school and I'll have a little more time. Uh, so if you have not already subscribed to the gaming channel, there's a link in the description of every video uh, that'll show you that. It's called History Guy Gaming. I do a lot of strategy and war games on there. But let's go ahead and dive in. This is a new song that just came out. It's called Steel Commanders. And I've been getting messages from people saying, hey, react to Steel Commanders. So here it is. I'm also excited that I'm going to be seeing Sabaton live for the first time in a couple of weeks. Uh, so I'll hopefully be able to bring you a little bit of footage from that as well. But let's go ahead and dive in to Steel Commanders. intro. They really upped their game on production value on these videos. I love it. Alright, so this is pretty cool. So I, I, my impression of that intro is that, you know, if you think about medieval warfare, you know, you, you had knights who were heavily armored, heavily weaponed. They were like the, the tough guys on the battlefield, you know, the ones that were toughest to take down and did the most damage on the battlefield because not everybody was a knight. Uh, and so likewise, you get into World War I and you're dealing with tanks who are kind of the knights of the battlefield. They're the tough uh, ones that, that are out there being able to take people out and much tougher to bring one down. So I like that comparison, that segue from the knights of medieval warfare to the tanks of modern warfare. Cello? Nice. So we got a reference to Montgomery and Patton. I don't really know. Um, Field Marshal Montgomery's uh, history when it comes to his service in World War I, but I do know that Patton, George S. Patton, uh, who's one of the most prominent commanders in World War II, was kind of the tank guy in World War I. He commanded a tank brigade in World War I, and he was kind of the first real um, you know, leader of, of tanks in World War I. He also was the first guy to uh, lead a, um, how would you say it, a motorized attack in the history of the U.S. Army, uh, when he loaded up some guys on the back of a car uh, during the um, the U.S. Uh, our incursion into Mexico, uh, chasing after Pancho Villa because Pancho Villa had raided into sub the southern United States uh, in the years leading up to World War One, uh, and so he had kind of led that first motorized attack as well, using uh, a, 
uh, vehicle to do that. And so um, he ends up, I think, a lieutenant colonel or maybe a full colonel by the end of World War One. But then he gets reverted back to his pre-war rank. Um, but that that's really cool. So we're not just talking about World War One. I. I guess we're just talking about tanks in general here. So El Alamein's a really important battle that takes place during World War II in uh, in Northern Africa. Uh, it is a, one of the first kind of big tank battles that goes on between the Allies uh, and Rommel's Axis forces. The first Panzers, of course. Panzers uh, is is the German word for tank, um, and uh, you know there's a lot of little references here and there. I'm not going to stop for every single one of them. So it looks like, uh, is this sponsored by World of Tanks again? Because that's pretty awesome if it is. I love that. Um, so Prokhorov, uh, Prokhorovka is uh, part of the larger Battle of Kursk. Uh, and some will argue, uh, there's some debate about that because there's another battle where people argue had more tanks. But um, a lot of historians will say that uh, Prokhorovka is the largest tank battle in history as a lar part of the uh, larger Battle of Kursk. Uh, on the eastern front between Russia and the Germans. Overlord, of course, is uh, the operation that begins with the landings at Normandy, and tanks were part of that landing at Normandy. The of the victory, Sword Beach. Love that they added a cello. Oh, they're getting in one now. That was pretty epic, uh, as always. Oh, there's more to it. Let's see what else they show here. Probably something about World of Tanks. That was cool. It had kind of an armor scheme like uh, like knights would. All right, that was pretty cool. I liked that one a lot. Uh, very, very cool. Uh, they do have a new album coming out uh, in October, I think. 
uh, which is the War to End All Wars. So it's going to be another World War One themed album. I'm super excited about that. Cannot wait uh, to get my hands on that. So let me know your thoughts about this song. I'm sure there'll be a uh, Sabaton History video coming out about that as well. Use the comment section below. Let me know. I put a link in the description to the original video so you can check that out as well. See you later. Thanks for watching.